Mr. Ram Madhav doesn't need an introduction because you must be seeing him or reading him every day in all the newspapers. He's the most visible face of Sangh ideology, Hindu Parivar or Sangh Parivar, whatever you call it. I was asking him, how do I introduce you? Because I know him for many years. But his role after reading what he does every day, I can't figure out what he, what he actually does. He's intellectual par excellence. He's orator, one of the best. And uh, he must be the most frequent flyer, and he must have accumulated maximum miles, which no other leaders has, because he's flighting. Every flight you go, you'll find a Mahara Madhav every day in one flight or the other. So he's going, coming here, then he's going to Bangalore, from there he's going to Patna, from, I don't know how many destinations he's going to cover. So you can't compete with him. But currently Jobless he's, and busy. Yeah, sorry? Said jobless and busy. <laughs> okay. So he currently the President of India Foundation, which is one of the best globally known think tank. Think tank is a bad name these days in India because they have banned just one most old center for policy research. But he runs a think tank which is much more active in both domestic affairs and international affairs. So Ram Madhav also is some kind of a unofficial, I would call, whether the foreign minister or the foreign secretary, or all combined into one, he represents the Indian culture, Indian ideology in foreign relations, and most of the time he's busy organizing seminars, he's hosting big, big conclaves where people from all over the world and come and participate. But today the different issue, I, we have invited him to speak more about Bharata Nenitutva, because he is the most articulate, ardent spokesperson of Hindutva. There is a difference between Hinduism and Hindutva, because most of the critics of the BJP, they don't call Hinduism, they call Hindutva, because Hindutva they think is some kind of political ideology. Am I right? They think in that way. So whether I want to start with you, Mr. Ramwadu. During the last nine years, ten years, we have seen India becoming Bharat suddenly in, through one invitation which has gone out of the president house, it became Bharat, suddenly. Then the second invitation from the Prime Minister went as a Bharat. Without formal announcement, it became a Bharat. The topic is that Bharat you introduced because you wanted to make it a Hindutva nation, Hindu nation. Is there a connection between the name change and Ram Raj, what is happening, Ram Prasishtha? Is there the connection between the changing the name, not changing the name, calling it Bharat, in fact, I wrote two years ago, why didn't you call it Bharat, when nobody took it seriously. So, Hindutva and Bharat, do you think they are synonymous, they are one? Or in India, there is some kind of, India is more important or Bharat is more important? Oh, oh, firstly, uh, we do not regard Hinduism and Hindutva as two separate and different things. Hinduism, many in our parivar do not see it in, the, uh, in terms of any ism. So we generally avoid using the word ism for denoting Hindutva, Hinduness. Hindutva is just the very Indianized uh, you know, version or word for Hinduism, if you want to use it that way. For us, there is actually no difference. But if somebody wants to criticize us and he wants to, you know, you know, uh, sail in both the boats. He wants to be on the Hindu side also, but also against the RSS. Then they try to create this artificial distinction between Hindutva and Hinduism that doesn't exist. Secondly, this uh, thing that Bharat we suddenly started is also not correct. It was started in 1950. When India's constitution was officially promulgated, we said India, that is Bharat. By the way, may I remind, I was watching on your screen on the back side, you are one of the sponsors, the Bharat Petroleum. We have not started Bharat Petroleum. It has been there right from the time of independence. Bharat and India have always been in vogue in our countries uh, at the same time. Sometimes we used India, sometimes we used Bharat. We are a we are a party and an ideological uh, parivar which is uh, more rooted in uh, our uh, you know, civilizational or cultural um, identity. So we sometimes prefer to use the word Bharat more prominently, more eloquently. That's all. 
there is no again just as there is no reason to pit hinduism against hindutva there is no reason to pit bharat against uh, india at least as far as we are concerned we don't see it that way and bharat hindu india hinduism these are all in a way synonymous with our existence this country is identified at various levels with all these words hindu hindutva bharat india this is the identity of this country in different contexts in different uh, ways we identify with this so whether we are now starting something new whether we are taking uh, the country in the hindutva direction i don't think that is really any uh, any tenable argument because these are all uh, always the core identity of this country we deviated from it we thought that we should probably discard it uh, let me end by just reminding you know in 1946 uh, december i think when constituent assembly's first uh, you know objects resolution was to be moved nehru was to move it while moving that resolution nehru makes a very interesting statement he says you know i know that we are a 5000 year old civilization great culture great civilization but when i remember that i get overwhelmed i get petrified and i think that whether uh, i mean i think whether i am really qualified to be a representative of that great civilization and all that he starts with that argument so what nehru probably found was probably i am not uh, very qualified to be a representative of it i am using his own words i am not putting my argument here so he thought let me take an easier way the fad of the day was uh, european idea so we take it let us simply say that whatever you talk about your culture your hinduness your bhartiyata is backwardness so it has a history there was a debate over what should be our country what should our country be called india was proposed by the drafting committee after a lot of debate we added uh, that is bharat also so for us india bharat hinduism hinduness shashi tharoor ji is there uh, he authored a book on the virtue of hinduism i mean today we are all recognizing that that is the virtue of it that are hindutva there are for us there is no difference i just want to ask what was the need of renaming bharat now in ele- just before the election india was there and what was the hurry in suddenly g20 use and platform for promoting bharat was it a political message or you wanted to define redefine the identity of india as bharat what was the hurry why didn't you do it when you came back because it is written in the constitution india that is bharat which i wrote 2 years ago and i am saying 3 years ago at that time there was no no connection because bharat and bharat is there so i'm just asking everything why do you connect with the political convenience of yours you no, change your thing according to what suits you is it right that's the allegation no not not uh, political convenience at all if it was to be a uh, to be political convenience we should be doing it now just a couple of months before election not in october when g20 was held but g20 was an excellent opportunity when the leaders of the 80% of the world's economy all the big powers were present there you introduce uh, the the other core identity of this country as bharat see bharat in uh, uh, g20 was there used as a as a country name plate before honorable prime minister you know there will be several occasions when germany is introduced as dash land they introduce their country as dash land on international forums it is out of a sense of pride that you know this is my ancient identity that that was done but in the g20 literature india was also used several times it's not that we purged india and then we now changed it to something no but yes as i said it's our core belief we are rooted in the civilizational cultural uh, history and identity of this nation so we take pride in introducing us as uh, bharat and bharatiya where it is uh, good possible where it is necessary india is also used all the iits are still called iits N- name is not changed so uh, that's why i said we need not pit these uh, words against each other they all can happily live together
You are changing names anyway. You have changed the criminal law because it's in English, then you made it something very Sanskritized Hindi. So you are in the, in the process of name changing. You will do that also, what you are talking about. IIT might become Bharti, Anusandhan, or whatever you will call it later on. But question again I'm asking, because you, India and Hindutva, I'm linking with that, Bharat, because you have emphasis on Bharat. India is supposed to be, people look at India as a secular country. It doesn't connect it entirely with the Hindutva way of thinking, though India is a majority, 90% Hindus are there. So are you trying to erase that impression that India is no more a secular country? It is Bharat or Bharatiya, whatever your definition is that. Is that an attempt? Hindutva means Bharat, Bharat means Hindutva and nothing else. Oh, actually, on the contrary, Bharat has always been very secular. You see this whole idea of India being a secular country as, as stated by our constitution began in 1976. Even in 1950, or a couple of years before when that whole preamble was being framed, Nehru, on record, this was there in uh, J. Ram Ramesh's book on uh, Krishna Menon. Uh, he told Menon, go slow on this word secular. Don't use it so liberally. That's the reason why in our original constitution, in the preamble, we did not use both the words secular and socialist. The opposition came both from Ambedkar and from Nehru. Did it mean that we were not secular? Did it mean that until 1976, Indira Gandhi introduced secularism as a word in our constitution, India was not secular? Or for that matter, were we, were we not secular before 1947? So this whole, whole uh, myth of uh, uh, whether we became secular because we were being called India or we were not secular if we don't call us India, that's why I'm saying all these arguments, all these statements are very political. They don't really uh, stand uh, the real, real argument, reality. This country has been secular. And in fact, uh, the, that is one statement that Ambedkar makes. You don't have to say it as secular. You don't have to call it secular. Because the whole constitution, the spirit of it is secular. This, this was Ambedkar's word. So, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Bharat Boltehi, you are trying to make it uh, a communal country. You want to discard secular. No. But only thing is, if I were to add a rider to it, I would say it will be truly secular country. What? we were practicing had many, many issues, probably that do not even stand the test of that secular claim that we make. We need to be truly secular in the sense that in Bharatiya tradition, in our country's tradition, equal respect to all faiths, no preferential treatment for or against any religion is what should mean secularism here. The important reason is secularism is not the same in every country. In France, in public life, you have to completely dissociate from religion. That is secularism in France. But in UK, if you have to be the emperor, the king, the queen, you have to publicly proclaim your adherence uh, to Anglican church, not to another sect of Christianity. You have to be an Anglican to be the ruler. Is UK a secular country or not? When presidents uh, take oath in America, they place their hand on Bible. Okay, in India we place our hands on Constitution. There it is Bible or Bhagavad Gita, both are allowed. But the point is, a bishop is holding it. And you are placing that. Is America secular or not? Different countries have different understanding based on their cultural and civilizational ethos. Our understanding is equal respect, no discrimination, no preferential treatment on the basis of religion. That is true secularism. That is what we stand for. That is what Bharatiyata is all about. No, you are talking that political statements are being made. I will take an example of Shashi Thru, who he tweeted this morning, exposed. Ram is, is not a political idol. It's, his Ram is also your Ram. But you are trying to say my Ram is different than his Ram. Is that right? Oh, actually the other way. They are saying that their Ram is secular and our Ram is communal. The, the, no, 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 I tell you, sir. I tell you, I tell you. You know, this whole, whole uh, tamasha that is happening today about Ram Mandir. Sir, let, you were all active in journalism. You have seen these things in 1989. I was there yesterday. Yeah, you were there. <laughs> in 1989, sir, Silanyas happened. 
the 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 foundation laying ceremony of the temple happened so do you know with whose concurrence that happened with the then central government and with the then state government of uttar pradesh both were led by congress and when there was a dispute raised by the babri masjid action committee over the place where the shilanyas was to happen the location actual location where the shilanyas was to happen matter went to the high court high court said you know it should happen outside 2.77 acres of the plot what is the 2.77 acres could not be decided initially the central government said no 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 vishindu parishad is violating it is doing it in a dis in the disputed side etc etc then mr buta singh went mr kamlapati tripathi went the then chief minister narendra tiwari went held negotiation with vishindu parishad suddenly declared that the site that vishindu parishad decided to to silanyas is actually a valid site it is outside the dispute they gave i mean media wrote you all wrote that act to support of the then state and central government ram uh, janma bhumi shilanyas happened that is secular act when on the same site and the same shilanyas site if a temple is built how can it become a communal act where foundation was laid that is secular when you got it laid there you were present there and when the temple comes up how can it become a communal act so that's why i'm saying this whole thing is being politicized not by us but those who are opposing it faizabad say mr rajiv gandhi started his election campaign in 1989 from faizabad october why faizabad because and there was a reference that when if we get elected we will get ram rajya what is the ram rajya but your ram rajya is secular my ram rajya is communal but how can it raise, be that ram the question you raise rajiv gandhi question if we are covering that time when you are talking about construction of ram mandir why don't you give a credit to rajiv gandhi government for reopening the ram mandir it was closed for 45 years do you speak about that it was rajiv gandhi who facilitated the opening of the mandir after that you constructed the temple sir we went much further no you we went much you, further you, we actually you ever gave them we, we actually we actually invited the leaders of congress party are you, no, you come do no, it no, uh, that is the point <laughs> but the point they are making they who, said that no it is your ram, show ram, but you you were there for ram, uh, laying the, ram, the, the foundation first, stone correct you are right but who are you to invite them mandir no. ram belongs to shashi no, not we say. not we those who are mandated to build the correct. them that is answer See, that time it was vishindu parishad that is acceptable for congress my question, my question. you know mr buta singh held negotiations with ashok singhal ji with sir people know about it with with they in 1989 he held negotiations with him and between them an agreement happened that yes shilanyas will happen at the exact site where vishindu parishad had decided at the exact moment when it was decided this was an agreement and agreement means it is not a written agreement because the government was controlled by congress both in the state and in the in the cent at the center so uh, we are not pulsating it that's why invitation was extended you see do two things two things ram you will not give credit to uh, because i am witness to the history because why i am saying that it is become a political you want to use it at political that's the allegation the opposition is making i am just saying that Babri Masjid was demolished when Prime Minister of India was a Congress person, and he was sleeping when it was demolished. Guys, I went to his house on that day. I was Indian Express editor. On 5th of December morning, we published a photograph of Babri Masjid, how it is going to be demolished on 6th of December. The whole of, now you can search. He allowed willingly to demolish the whole thing. It should be over. Rajiv Gandhi government. open the gates of mandir so that the mandir process one step you demolish the structure second step you open the mandir so you become legitimate place owner but these are the two important milestones in the history of india which led to the final construction of the ram temple foundation for which was laid by the congress government do you agree or not no so fair enough i am going much further the ram lala appeared in the babri structure when congress was in power in 1949 it appeared k k nayar was the commissioner at that time so you are right you talked about uh, shilanyas sh before shilanyas locks were opened in 1986 mr rajiv gandhi was the prime minister 
sir if congress wants to take credit you know uh, shivasena wanted to take credit for uh, the demolition let congress also take credit for demolition or whatever because you are saying mr narsimhara did not do what he was supposed to do uh, so if that credit also you want to give to congress i don't mind i mean we are saying this mandir is coming up because of the sacrifices of millions of hindus and the desire of 1.4 billion indians indians i am saying for a very important reason when the temple construction was to be undertaken when it was decided to collect funding from the people we should not take a single penny from the governments neither from up government nor from the central government it was decided because when somnath was to be built it was a cabinet decision so so much of circular we are talking about i am criticizing i am actually welcoming it but when somnath was to be constructed it was decided in a cabinet meeting a cabinet resolution was passed that somnath temple should be reconstructed was it a secular act technically speaking was it secular mahatma gandhi was alive just uh, i mean not at the time of the resolution before he actually already told patel that whenever you want to rebuild somnath temple please don't use government money let it be a people's temple collect it from the public that is why patel says in the cabinet meeting that okay we are passing the resolution to rebuild the temple there but let us depend on the funds given by people of the country somnath was built like that so when you want to give credit na give to millions and millions of ram bhaktas and when the temple was consecrated in somnath rajendra babu was president okay you can say he was president of the uh, uh, country he was there why was purushottam das tandan there purushottam das tandan was the president of all india congress committee aicc why was tandan there if tandan can go to somnath why not kharge ji go to ayodhya bhai kharge ji ko secularism argument ke saath aaya which tandan ko aaya nahi hai so i am saying we are not politicizing we see ram mandir as the reflection of the sentiment and aspirations of 1.4 billion bharatiyas i said when we collected the funds from public muslims christians hindus sikhs everybody contributed communists only telling us that don't write our name on the receipt uh, take it we also wanted to so everybody contributed because some see ram as god some see him as great ancestor of our country somebody who gave a great value system why not we see it in that spirit we are not politicizing but why others want to politicize it anyway i'll open this because time short i'll open this first time because a lot of question may be asked any student when so ask any question can raise the hand and name as that the ram mandir was it for uh... साकार राम और निराकार राम राम इज यू नो वाल्मीकि रामायण डिस्क्राइब्स राम एज विग्रहवान धर्म दट इज वन फ्रेज यूज दि अदर वन इज मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम दि एपिटमी ऑफ ग्रेट वर्च्यू एंड ग्रेट वैल्यू सिस्टम सो यू यू वर्शिप हिम एज साकार दो सो वॉन्ट टू वर्शिप हिम एज साकार He is Sakar. You want to worship him in Nirakar. It is the value system. Maryada Purushottam. He is the epitome of great values, and he is, he is virtue personified. So he is both Sakar and Nirakar. In fact, that is the greatness of Hinduism. Our Hindu Twa for uh, for uh, if I were to use that word Hindu Twa, our Hinduism, it believes both in in form and formlessness. for us both is uh, divan because for us divinity is everywhere it is omnipresent you know religions that believed that god is formless there are many semitic religions they believe that god is formless but you see the description it's always he when it is formless why how is it uh, gender specific how is it he why not she so the real form formless uh, concept is our own concept ram for some is a form a deity with a bow and arrow for some for some it is balram which is enshrined in ayodhya for some it is the ram darbar sita ram lakshman and hanuman but some is just a value system which are way you want to worship we can worship is a question yeah yes. hello 
Yes, sir. We know that their India and Bharat name is there. Uh, if we see the constitution, there is uh, Bharat ka samvidhan, or if in English we say constitution of India. Since if we see that, uh, like how the new alliance with the name of India came into picture, is that since the new alliance came as the name of uh, India, now uh, the ruling party wants to uh, fortify the name of Bharat into the, uh, the nation. Is that ruling party is now scared that if we give the India, if any of the campaign which I will bring is like, uh, uh, will put as like uh, Startup India or any of the uh, 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 program which they bring with the name of India, so it will be showing that it's come from other. So startup allies. India have changed. No, no, it's not, not changed. Na. But then you are answering the question. We are not afraid. In fact, actually, uh, nobody is afraid from our side. There are many who are who are afraid of that side. Mamta Banerjee has declared, "I want, uh, I don't want to do anything with India Alliance." So they are more afraid, not we. Okay, number one. <laughs> number two. Uh, let me tell you some some interesting fact. I come from Andhra Pradesh, we speak Telugu. In Telugu, invariably, every book, everywhere, if you write about the name of the country, you read only Bharat Desham. Bharat is what we read. We don't read India Desham. We read Bharat, very naturally. Is it a political decision? We are afraid of India alliance, that's why we are using Bharat in Andhra Pradesh. That will be the most silly argument. No, nobody is afraid. There are many afraid on that side. They are not joining them, but that is not the reason. I can tell you that's not the reason. As I said, as I answered, Bharat, we have a commitment. It's an emotional uh, commitment, but we, it's not against any other word, whether it is India. Uh, Bharat uh, has the word Hindustan. Do you know so many companies today are Hindustan Aeronautics, Hindustan you know, Petrochemicals, HPCL. So many places Hindustan is used. No, we, have, we are happy, fair enough. You use Hindustan, you use Bharat, you use India. All of them mean same. It's not political at all. So, uh, from the constitution, India is mentioned as it's a secular nation. Uh, but from the comments that you made, uh, in, you said that India can also be represented as uh, India <coughs> or Bhar Bharat. We agree to that. But when you said you also added that India can also be mentioned as Hinduism or Hindutva, how could uh, it be related? No, India is mentioned, not, not mentioned, I'm not saying India is mentioned as Hinduism. Hindustan is the word we use for our country. I gave you examples, public sector undertakings have the name that starts with Hindustan. All these names never never represented anything sectoral, anything parochial. This Vikruti, this twisted mind has started recently. If you invoke Bharat or Hindustan, you are taking the country into a communal direction. But these words have been there right from the time of our independence, even before. So, this uh, twisted mind needs to be corrected. Probably this uh, new transformation that is happening will help us uh, achieve that. Uh, I'm so happy. Now, the, the challenge from the opposition also is not about whether Ram Temple is secular or uh, not secular. When do you allow me to go? You know yesterday's argument. Only one person should go to temple. Why not I go? We welcome this debate. Everybody should come. Everybody should uh, uh, enter the Ayodhya temple, all temples. That is uh, this land. This has been that land. I'm not saying it's something we are doing uh, for the first time. It has been the culture of this country. It has been the tradition of this country. That's why I gave the example of Somnath. Through a, through a cabinet resolution, we decided to rebuild Somnath. Through a cabinet resolution. And uh, if time permits, please read the speech of Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Not the, f not the correspondence between him and Nehru. It has been publicized far too much by different people in different ways. But the speech delivered by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, such a wonderful speech, and you see a lot of similarities in that speech and the speech delivered by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in uh, uh, Ayodhya on 22nd January. Rajendra Babu talked about a prosperous, developed India. Pradhan Mantri Modi ji talked about Vikshit Bharat. That is the spirit of all these enterprises. 
this is not parochial this is not communal this is for building a strong bharat but with self confidence not with a slavish attitude but with self confidence so this question may be from all common uh, indian there are many deep rooted issues i'm not mentioning about the facts which are disclosed in hindenburg or what happened to trandrum airport i'm not speaking about it the earlier session also the speakers they given a humble submission that the ruling government is trying to you know divert the attention of the people from the common issues starting from unemployment particularly the fuel price hike all those things they have mentioned do you think that the strategy which is adopted by now with the help of the temple where the pjb started the campaign to retain the position or whether the pjb government is having a moral fear about doing the campaign by explaining the achievements made during last couple of years almost 9 years so this is a common okay. man question okay yeah okay first of all don't arrogate to all all common men it's your question <laughs> that's it common men are very clear about what is this country and what is modi ji doing that's why they are supporting him and uh, the question has a relevance whether we are doing it for any political purpose or uh, it is a genuinely a project that was initiated and it has come to a conclusion i would say that uh, for us it's never uh, an electoral exercise or a political exercise it happens yeah you know again i'm sorry that i'm going back to that somnath again and again somnath happened in may 1951 in october elections were announced so may now submit that the first election congress wanted to win that's why they built somnath may say that no we are all proud that nation's heritage has been restored and millions are very clear about it some are confused some have issues but millions and millions are convinced about it and that's why i said in his entire speech did prime minister invoke babar the man who demolished the temple as per the babar nama did he invoke his name no did he try to pit one community against other no instead he said ram should be not an issue of conflict but of unity he said he should be the energy for the country because ram has always been a great unifier for us for everybody no election no politics in it 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 happened just before the general election but our whole you know this arrogant educated thinking is that indians are fools idiots you can sway them indians don't think they can be swayed sir please remember not today 1949 26th november dr rajendra prasad delivered his final address to constituent assembly he referred to this argument by some members in the constituent assembly that india is uneducated there was only 70 17% literacy at that time so democracy will not work here people can be you know influenced or purchased rajendra babu says i come from a village in bihar i have full faith in the wisdom and political maturity of my countrymen even if it is a rural person even he is educated or educated he is politically he is mature he is wise you don't have to worry about india's democracy and we have proved for 75 years so please don't worry today it is safe because the opposition is not winning you can't say that no 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 modi is using other things no it's not our duty to highlight what is good, what is not good if it is not good let opposition highlight it if it is their unemployment let dmk highlight it let congress party highlight it let people agree if people agree they will vote for you if they vote for you they are wise if they vote for bjp they are swayed when four states elections happened five states happened three bjp won one congress won one another party won how can you say people are swayed in only three states but not in telangana so these are all arguments that we educated people thinking we are very rational we try to make people of this country are wise they know who is the right person to lead this country probably they have decided for next 10 12 years thank you